He means Greninja and Robin. Gotcha. Very interesting lineup, and we're definitely seeing the, the white Greninja, you know, Ouch is pink wolf. They're just getting right into it here. Ouch, of course, man, myth, legend, hero of BC. Yeah. Got the hometown crowd behind him. Uh, I do believe the, the face cams are frozen, by the way. If the face cams are what, sir? The, the face cams are frozen. Oh, yeah. yeah. There yeah. we go. There we go, yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, the, the, um, the down smash, ledge trap, of course. You know, Ouch really wants to find the kill because he knows Greninja will die at this percent. Yeah. Greninja, definitely not the heaviest character in this game. Finally, Ouch taking some percent there. He was going ham right at the start of this stock. I just love the way Ouch finds openings, like the back air, of course, you know? Yep. Oh, he's a phenomenal player. Doesn't get too flustered as well. Always looks super stoic up there on stage, and that's something I really appreciate. You know, at this regional, we already know that Ouch is going to really put on a show for us, representing BC as its best player. Nice couple forward airs there. Goes for the back air to try and finish it off. That might have killed. That even at 57. Yeah. Oh, nice side smash there. Al just has to stand still because we know Capsize is afraid of Wolf's disjoints. He For can't sure. challenge them at all. Yeah, he's definitely struggling a little bit in this one just to keep pace, even playing with the faster character. Yeah. Gets a side smash there, but not able to convert off of it. Wolf flashing to the platform, drops down in with the up tilt, takes the stock. We got Al to the three stock lead right now. This Two is stock. looking clean so far. Yeah. Only at 66%. Yeah, Greninja, you know, you think of it. Definitely oh, a combo at... character, but <laughs> oh. <laughs> looks like the roles have been reversed in this one with Wolf and Ouch pulling out all of these. You know, Amazing. as the as the great Ouch once said, you know, just practice. He pra <laughs> yeah, he literally just said, you know, how do I how do how do I get as good as Ouch? And then I, he said, just practice. I and definitely thought he was going to go for something crazy off stage there, oh, up yeah. three stocks to one, but staying cool, staying reserved. He doesn't want any funny business. As usual. Ouch, moving so carefully around Capsize's shield. Oh, there's the side smash, but no, not going to take it. Good DI coming out from Ouch. Using that Wolf Flash a lot, both as a recovery tool and just a movement tool. And that is Ouch's first stock of the set so far. And, and that's the match. Jump. Yeah, you got to watch out. Ouch will call you out on stuff like that. Definitely phenomenal play from him right off the bat. It's what we expect, of course. Of course. <laughs> Ouch is phenomenal. He's such a great wolf. Yeah. Howdy, folks. Red X and I doing a little bit of a Pyramithra switch here as Oni's partner on the comms, but yeah. uh, I'm Seabrand, I'm back here again. And really excited to see game two of this one. And it looks like Capsize is going to switch to the Robin here. Greninja wasn't working too well for him. Going to go for somebody with, you know, a bit more projectiles available, some more zoning options. See if he can keep out the slower wolf and yeah, stop getting comboed so hard. Yeah, knowing how, sm how smart Ouch is, he's going to be using that reflector more because Robin being a zoner, he's got to watch out for the arc fires, the L thunders. Yeah, of course. And Ouch, again, we talk about all of his skills, phenomenal reaction time as well. I doubt, especially with uh, the speed at which Robin's projectiles travel, he's going to have any issue bouncing a bunch of those back. Absolutely. Ouch wants to be able to contest as much as he can to be on stage because, you know, Wolf's advantage is, isn't something to, you know, underestimate. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. We've seen that down smash kill so early. Oh, well, that's the thing about Wolf. There's so many options. We talk about the back airs off stage, the down smash, as you say. Capsize has got to watch out to play well on these platforms because Ouch can take advantage of it and just reverse it like that. He's definitely keeping this one a lot closer, which we like to see. Yeah. Not sure if we like a close set. But we also like to see Ouch dominate sometimes because he does get a Twitter clip once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we'll be happy. Let's say that. Goes for the back guy there to try and get him, but Good grab Capsize is able to get underneath it. But there's the back throw. Capsize is thinking really deeply right now. Yeah, couldn't get couldn't get off the ledge there, and the side tilt's going to finish it. But a nice back air there. Keeping it even. Down. Good yeah. on Capsize. Not to jinx or anything, but this may be Capsize finding some contesting against Ouch. Yeah. No, you know? it's quite impressive. Even when Ouch is getting nice and close, um, Capsize isn't sort of fumbling under the pressure. He's able to use some of his close range options. He is, of course, using the zoning options as well, but even in those tighter moments, he's not being flummoxed, yeah. but, you know, this is why you never do commentary. Never speak. Of course. <laughs> commenta commentary is curse, as yeah. one would say. <laughs> Nice uh, spike there from Ouch. And now uh, Capsize potentially on his last stock and already taken 55. 
Capsize is really using his Levin Sword really well, you know? Just making sure that he can dish out that those those like 18 damage aerials, which are sure. really good for keeping yeah. Wolf at this That chunk damage is helpful. Nice tech there. He needed that. Absolutely. Not yeah, taking advantage that. of the recovery. Yeah, we see... Oh! oh. Okay. A mistake there from Ouch, and there is a small opening here for Capsize. He's got to play safe around, you know, all of Wolf's aerials, the tilts. Yeah, in case you're not aware already, Arcfire will kill Wolf at zero on this stage. Oh, wow. Until the up tilt comes out, <laughs> in which Ouch 2 O's Capsize. And we didn't get the chance to see it. But Pretty hey, clean stuff from Ouch there. Yeah, absolutely. Taking Ouch to last stock, that's awesome. Yeah. No, good stuff on Capsize. Yeah. Good luck to him in uh, the loser's bracket. His run will continue. Good, yeah, good, good luck to him, man. Definitely. I'm a big Capsize fan because of his character choice, you know? For sure. And, I mean, uh, it's easy for us sitting here being from BC to cheer for the BC guys, but those that came up from right. Washington, yeah. it's awesome to see them here. It's awesome that we can have uh, cross-border competition again. Right, yeah. I can, um, what's it called? I don't think it's biased to like both players and give them compliments, you know? So I, I, just, I just like doing that. You know, I'll, I'll say, oh, I like this player and this guy is doing so well against this player. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, once again, commentator bias is lame. Yeah. I love Dawson, man. Yeah, hard not to love everybody up there. Yeah. I do believe um, I heard that Pandarian entered this tournament. Pandarian did enter the tournament and unfortunately had to DQ. Uh, they had a run in with uh, somebody who tested positive at a local back in Washington. Uh, uh, they did have a negative test from a couple days ago, but since the exposure had been since then, the TOS had to play it safe. Really unfortunate. That's terrible. Obviously, we want another PGR player to be coming and playing in BC, um, but they couldn't but make hey, it. You know, at least you got Big D. Yeah, it's true. Number yeah. 49 in the world. Yeah. <laughs> at least from a year and a half ago. Definitely making his comeback uh, for the rest of this year, hopefully, and then we might see him at some majors. Yeah. That'd be great. I mean, of course, we're all looking forward to Pinnacle coming up just in a few weeks here. The Pacific Northwest swing as well with Riptide, or Port Priority rather. Yep. Ice Climber. It's Ice Climber's pick. The classic. And we're seeing Cake. He's, uh, I recognize him for sure. He's a really good duck hunt. He's taking some names offline. Uh, do you believe he did well in Smash World Tour? I may be corrected by that. Yeah, they're just about to get started here. All right, awesome. This is this is excellent. You know, I gotta say, I'm a big Cake fan, I'm a big Big D fan, of course. But you know, Duck Hunt, Ice Climbers, it's it, imagine we don't see everything. I was just gonna say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one that you get at the end of your Smash Downs if you play those. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I do believe Cake is from Ontario. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So th that's a pretty a pretty big travel right there. But you know. Obviously going to keep using those clay pigeons as he did in Ontario. Yeah. Keeping the pressure on Big D. And you got to wonder, I mean, for both of these players, how well they know this matchup. Um, right. Going against, you know, definitely bottom half character choices. Definitely looks like Cake knows what he's doing right here at the start. Duckhand has that ability to just throw projectiles in so many random directions, really bamboozle opponents. Of course. Able to get a nice catch on the ledge there, but Cake returning to stage, no problems. 
You got, yeah, you gotta love duck hunt projectile usage. You know the can. You know using your attacks to kind of maneuver it. It's it's genius. I feel like you have to you have to keep your eyes going in so many different parts of the screen. Also, yeah. ca can we talk about how how Cake is you know separately fighting both Nana and Popo? Yeah. Like, on the opposite sides of the stage. No, oh, yeah, it's really impressive, and that's the point I'm making. You have Popo on one side, Nana on the other side. You have the duck hunt. Yeah. Each of the projectiles can be in different places and can last on stage. You basically yeah have to have your eyes on all corners at once. Makes it really difficult, and we saw that there was Cake taking the first stock. Right. You know, Cake really showing that I gotta represent my my province, and I'm gonna make it out here in a nice winner's bracket. But we still haven't seen enough of Big D. He's gonna pop off soon enough. I already know it. Oh yeah, for sure. We're <laughs> not <laughs> counting him out of this match anytime soon. Of course. There oh, we go. That what was a such a clean conversion. <laughs> what was that? Down B, side B, up smash? Yeah. All the Ice Climber stuff, <laughs> just trust that they know what they're doing. They could they could tell me that anything's a combo, and I yeah, believe it. Yeah, I, I do believe uh, Big D's the only PGR Ice Climbers in the first place, so <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And and I trust him in that. Oh, tried oh. to get the forward air spike there, but not effective. Oh, Interesting having the down B sitting there is almost like a preventative tool against getting the ledge trapped or edge guarded. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, also, can is frame one, so there is an opportunity where, you know, maybe... Oh, look at that! Popo, oh my gosh, Popo. got separated there and wasn't able to recover. Yeah, really great work by Cake there, just isolating Nana, making sure that she couldn't get back to... Uh, and she couldn't get back to Big D's Popo. Yeah, like I was saying, um, can is frame one, and if Cake does get into, like, a little wobble combo, you know, like the side B, this, um, um, you know, these things, it could be... Really good for Cake to just frame one can out of the combo and gets 20 damage and out of disadvantage. Yeah, no, free. great, great tool for him to have there. Yeah. It's essentially a poor man's snake grenade. <laughs> it ain't too poor the way we're looking at it now because <laughs> yeah, because Cake is keeping a good advantage right now. Yeah, Snake wishes he had this kind of projectile. <laughs> for sure. Definitely the most explosive duck hunt gameplay we've ever seen yet. Yeah, no, they uh, they're playing close to each other a lot more than I would expect. Um, oh, oh my <laughs> gosh, that conversion! <laughs> Alrighty, yeah, back air off the can, taking it there. Cake looked clean. Yeah, good he for looked him. Smooth. Uh, he's playing really well right now. Yeah, put himself at uh, quite a percent advantage right off the start, and Big D not able to close that gap. Um, obviously, a zoner like that, really comfortable just sitting back, playing patient, and Big D not able to find those openings. Again, with everything that Cake was throwing out on uh, throwing out on screen, felt like it was everything but the kitchen sink out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And really difficult yeah. to navigate around, especially Ice Climbers, you know, not the most mobile characters. Um, besides, you know, having a couple recovery options, they're not too fast. Their airspeed isn't anything to... Uh, to write home about, so. I just think that the, the one thing that makes Ice Climbers that kind of like vi like viable is Their just X factor. Is, yeah, just like that touch of death, you know, just yeah. like getting when you once you get grabbed and you see Big D doing side B, like you just like pull down your controller and then you just like take a nap for a bit, maybe look on your phone and yeah. then wait till you get <laughs> spiked by fair and oh whoa, my stock's gone. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. There are times when you don't get to play the game against Ice Climbers when he gets the D sinks or any of those crazy combos. Yeah, we know confirms. how consistent Big D is at you know playing these Ice Climbers, these little mountain climbers as to the best of their ability. Yeah. And oh, yeah, he is. I mean, I wonder what he would say about that, because it looks like to us he's optimized this character, but right. he might say there's still more hidden tech out there. Uh, anyway, we're going to get right into game two here, sticking with the same characters. Yeah, no character switches, but on Smashville, Biggie's pick, by the way. So we're going to see how this plays out. Smaller stage, maybe yeah. trying to find a way to close the space between Cake and himself. Yeah, no, definitely noticed that in the first match on Battlefield. The, the ability to, you know, Drop the sheriff on platforms or things like that. Now there's yeah. a lot less space for the duck hunt to work with, and we can see it already. Ice climber is essentially functioning as a rushdown character. <laughs> of course, Big D taking control of both characters on the stage right now. Yeah. Some freezing zoning from the from the neutral bees right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the mid air, the mid air down beat. That was that was really yeah, interesting. Yeah, this is really solid. Interested to see what Big D will go for, trying to get the kill on the duck hunt here. It's definitely looking a little different because, you know, like, as I said, you know, really wanted to close the space right now. And he got a lot off of, you know, some up airs. Yeah, it feels like a lot of the time, Cake just doesn't have as much of the time, but We're gets the, the side right smash now. there. Sopo able to recover, but now definitely 
momentum swings back to Cake here, going against the single Ice Climber. 104 to 130. And now this will sort of allot Cake that extra time. <laughs> the classic, big, yeah. big D Sopo, gotta love it. You know? He definitely doesn't get phased when he's left with only one, and we'll see if he how much extra credit that he can get. Yeah, but of course, the cake awareness, trying to really really push this can out there to catch um, you know, the ice climber air mobility, which isn't the best. Yeah. Big D's paint playing so well with such a deficit. I mean, not in terms of stocks, but just like in character, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you see Cake throwing out these projectiles, but they're not really going to kill, right? It's not like a sandwich charge shot or anything like um, that. Oh my of gosh. course, in that case, it did work out for him. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like uh, I feel like Big D was able to spend a lot of time living with the Sopo there because Cake was sit sitting back. He wasn't going for any ridiculous kill setups or anything like that. He was playing so patient that allowed Big D to get that extra credit. Yeah, most definitely. This, uh, like, you know, this duck hunt is mighty fine, I gotta say. Even with such a disadvantage right now, you I gotta put faith in Cake because that can is flying and it keeps getting shot and shot until yeah. it gets gets back on stage. Good luck ledge trapping that character. Yeah. Good throwing luck. out the can, throwing out the down V. <laughs> the, the clay pigeon, just yeah. so much things to take into consideration. When he's below ledge, he's an advantage, it almost feels like. Because yeah. <laughs> he gets the time to throw out all of his oh, projectiles. Yeah, I think he drops from ledge and then up it again to get Nana back on. Yeah. Which, which, is, which is really good. I love the way Big D can keep, the, um, you know, the two together. <laughs> no man left behind. No woman left behind, I guess, right. in that case. <laughs> <laughs> it's brother and sister, right? I, You know, I thought Sakurai said that they were, like, less than lovers, more than friends. Ah. This is what I've heard. Whatever that means. Maybe so, that's lost in translation somewhere. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Cake there is going to lose his second stock, and we're getting potentially closer to having a game three here. Oh, yeah. Ice Climber separated, but Big D evil. still have a look at the damage. Not, not finding the desync, but you know, looking more towards the percent. Oh, yeah. Hi, Nana. <laughs> looking more towards the percent. Cake is really trying to find a kill right now, but you know, this Sopo from Big D, you gotta respect it. It's scary. Able to use the side B to power through the can there. That's a very helpful tool in his arsenal. Yeah. But the down B will take it, and we're on a last stock situation. 42 on cake right now. This could be a big D quick stock, but we are also going to see some good damage here by cake. Look at this condition. Oh, he gets, he gets the isolation there. He's got the separation. He's got Popo alone off stage, but he's not able to convert there, even with not on the other side of the Smashville platform. I don't. I don't. He's barely gotten hit this like the, yeah. the, through the stock. I know? think he started at 42 or something like that. Yeah, and now he's at so, 53 only. Yeah, pretty much 143% uncontested. This could be huge right now. This could be Big D's last stock. Yeah. Until All of a loose. sudden, it looked like he had a lot of control in this game, but amazing work by Cake here. Using the, the projectiles, using the, I guess, desyncs, but in an offensive sense, separating the Ice Climbers and uh, making them have to fight on their own. Look at that ledge trap. The F That'll tilt. do it. Reads the roll. Good on Cake, man. 2-0. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's definitely a surprise, that, that I would is, say. That is a big win. Knocks Big D into losers. We saw him stick with the Ice Climbers. I thought maybe after game one, he might think about going Captain Falcon or something like that. We saw him use Falcon in doubles earlier today. Uh, he was using him last week when he won the Cave Series. Definitely a pocket that he's been using a lot, but he stuck with it. And... You know, Cake was able to figure out the matchup and take this one 2-0. Yeah, good for Cake. You know, I'm not I'm not a matchup expert when it comes to Duck Hunt versus Ice Climbers, but it definitely looked like Ice Climbers has, like, a lot of trouble getting past the ledge traps because there's only so much you can do with Ice Climbers, you know? Yeah. You got to worry about the separation, you know, the, how much damage you take because, cause like, um, Nana has, like, a health bar too, you know? Yeah. We just can't see it, so... Yeah, for sure. That's why I thought the Falcon might have been a good play, just for the speed aspect as well. Yeah. You know, really push Cake, put him in uncomfortable situations where he can't just, you know, press all of his specials all at once and give himself that force field around that the Ice Climbers can't break through. Captain Falcon is, you know, your typical rushdown character, might have been able to get in there and, and just force him to be a bit nervier um, and, and fight in those really close, in that really close proximity. Right, yeah. You know, uh... Anyways, Big D and losers. We'll see how that goes. We might see him again. We may not. But, you know, it would be a treat to see him push his efforts for one more match. For sure.
Next up, we got Lemon and Opsign. We're just going to keep going here. We might be seeing a, a few different characters. Lemon has a Sephiroth and a Joker. Yep. Opsign has a Villager and a ZSS. Yeah.